Do you believe in blockchain technology? Ultimately, what you believe is that it can lower the ticket price for financial services and in some ways democratize finance, or at least that's what its evangelists like to think. Um, to date, the most popular way to buy physical uranium is over the counter in blocks of 50,000 pounds, which if you look at the market, costs around $4.2 million. Um, what we're doing with uh, uranium.io is trying to reduce the unit size for a purchase so that you can buy an ounce for five bucks instead of having to buy a large OTC block. Um, so the idea is make it easier for people to um, benefit from the rise in interest around uranium as a commodity and to get exposure to that asset class. Where does this leave the black market for uranium then? Because as we think about Bitcoin, we know that there are all different state actors and various different parts of the world that are using this crypto to try and move money around. As we talk about uranium, it gets very sensitive as well in terms of national security. How do we think about what you're doing and whether that endangers access to uranium and the implications there? Well, as you, as you might imagine, the uranium market itself is extraordinarily highly regulated. And so, um, you know, this isn't made in a vacuum. We've used many partners that are very established players in the uranium uh, game. So uh, regulated depositories, so on and so forth, KYC checks, verified ownership. Um, really, the main benefit is that we've reduced the unit size that you can purchase a block of uranium for, but certainly you're not going to take delivery of that. Uh, Kathleen, can I just ask about how this is going to work as well? Because there was a project that tried to do something similar like this last year, Uranium 308. And what we saw was that the actual price of, of the token decoupled from the physical price uh, of uranium uh, at this point. So how are you going to maintain that stability? Um, yeah, I think, frankly, like we've done everything entirely differently than what they have. So that basically started off as a mining project uh, with a, a miner of uranium. Um, and then, like most crypto projects do, it sort of like gave up once the hard parts uh, came to pass and they sort of just did an NFT project at the end. Um, we've been working with people who've been playing in the uranium game uh, for a really long time and made it as compliant as, as, you know, as humanly possible um, to basically run a spot market that um, will hopefully be pegged obviously to the, the prevailing price, uh, but more importantly is, is using best in class um, partners who've been in the uranium game for a while. And this idea of, of real world asset tokenization has been spoken about for so many years and it's been quite hyped up. Yeah. We are starting to see signs of that happening, you know, with project like this now, but there was a point where everyone's talking about everything from, from art and real estate to, to obviously commodities as well being put on the blockchain. Is there a little bit more of a sort of realism setting in that perhaps there's not demand for all of that? Or, or is that something that is still yet to come? Well, I think the main, there's been two main problems with that thesis. It's either you've, you're, there have been projects that have been trying to basically make it easier to buy real assets that were already quite liquid. So, I mean, geez, you can get gold from anywhere. <laughs> it's not really much of a differentiator. I think, you know, the reason I'm excited about this uranium.io is because it's actually using the blockchain for what it's supposed to be used for, which is basically lowering the ticket price for financial services, um, getting access to something that only institutions and ultra high net worths have been able to get to date, and uh, yeah, lower, lowering the ticket price, making it easier, but also in a regulatory compliant way. Um, so using KYC and, and all these things at the edges where it needs to be, but not um, transferring the cost over or creating um, inordinate amounts of risk uh, or from the fund managers. Kathleen, let me come back to the regulatory side of things, of course. In, in the incoming Trump administration, we still do not know how he is going to look at crypto. We don't know if it's going to want to, he's going to want a Trump coin that's going to, or we're going to have a, a, res, a central reserve of crypto. We just don't know. And in a similar vein as well, we, we don't know how they're going to approach a, a potential decentralized uranium market or a market that has um, more people trading spot, more people trading um, some form of exchange based crypto as well. Doesn't, isn't it fraught with danger, given everything we, we know about the world now and we know how many bad actors there are out there? Isn't there a danger that, as Karen pointed out, the concern we have about um, criminals using crypto would be magnified when those criminals start trading uranium? Oh, I disagree. I think um, what's been interesting... I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Um, but uh, certainly I think one of the more surprising elements of the election cycle is that nuclear energy has become a cross-partisan um, supported uh, yeah. measure. And so I think there's widespread enthusiasm for uranium and reviving the nuclear capacity. I'm not worried about yeah. big US techs using uranium responsibly via yeah. some form of SMR, as Karen pointed out. I'm not worried about, I'm worried about the, the bad guys using uranium. I think we're all very worried about that. Um, I going to <laughs> increase their ability to A, remain anonymized and B, get source if you are talking about both the, the exchange-based market and indeed the spot delivery? I think the way that 
Well, there's there's no delivery, um, and so basically what you're doing is there'll, you're, be, no, there'll be no physical market that where, where there's delivery. You have ownership of basically you're a beneficiary to a trust that has physical uranium yes. when you use this market, yes. but um, it's a very highly regulated market, and so no, you won't be able to take delivery of the asset. But then, what's use of it for those technology companies if they can't take delivery? Um, speculation, um, and certainly if you're Specul so, so putting more speculation into the uranium market is a good thing. I think it is. I think it allows more people to come and get exposure of the asset. Why, why? Why do we need them to have more exposure to an asset which is um, basically essential for the energy transition? To create potential spice, price spikes and price uh, crashes potentially? No, oh, I disagree. I think, um, I, I think it's been unfair that only um, pe people have been able to buy it for units of 50,000 pounds and I is think it, it's but, great but, to but, buy it but for But aren't us. there certain commodities that we just don't need me and Arjun and Karen and I say you to trade? You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's so systemically important for the global transition to a lower carbon world, why, why should we have a load of people potentially creating enormous volatility in that product? Oh, I, I humbly disagree. I think it's again. Um, I thought you would. Yeah, um, and I don't think that's going, it's going to happen. So, we all do blame but, but, this. But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to go back one more thing. I, I know one or two things about commodities. I've traded one or two in my life as well, and I know a lot of people who trade softs and everything, and they blame a lot of the vicious price action we've seen on a lot of soft commodities. Uh, on speculators rather than actually the producers and the end users actually having a, some form of medium of exchange. And that's where we disagree. <laughs> okay, okay, yes. I'll, I'll back off. While we've got you here, can I ask you about uh, other elements that we often talk to you about in crypto? Bitcoin, since we last spoke, uh, the price has put on about another 10,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Trump trade has been there, but uh, even cited in the last week or so, the politics in France, the situation around martial law being declared and retracted in South Korea. You know, what do you make of the, the catalysts still that are driving the Bitcoin price? Um, yeah, I think it's still overwhelming enthusiasm for the Trump administration, the incoming Trump administration. Uh, we still don't have a clear answer as to um, you know, who's going to be appointed in charge of the SEC once Gary Gensler leaves, but certainly the fact that uh, Chairman Gensler is going to be leaving in January has led to newfound enthusiasm. Uh, Bitcoin price in US dollars is still under $100,000, which I guess is the spiritual rallying call that a lot of maximalists have um, been been anticipating for the last few weeks but haven't quite hit. Um, Senator Lomas in the meantime has proposed a strategic Bitcoin reserve. So um, there's a lot of notions that the federal government is going to uh, change its tune almost entirely from the Biden administration. Uh, and so yeah, that's led to continued uh, enthusiasm for Bitcoin and it's also obviously uh, bled into other alternative cryptocurrencies as a result. There's one thing, the idea of Trump being sort of pro uh, the industry, there's another him being sort of pro creating a, a good regulatory environment for the industry. Do you think that's actually going to happen? Um, overwhelmingly, yes. All signs point to yes. Uh, I think a lot of uh, the incoming, not just Trump administration, but also the Congress, uh, were basically backed by uh, large PACs uh, that were pro-crypto. And so um, I think that led to overwhelmingly, like not just the administration, but the legislative bodies are also going to be probably very pro-crypto.